So we feel like tired is a mindset. At Impact Performance, we, all, we say the only tire we know on vehicle. I think it's important to focus on the things that we did do well and just build off that. And understanding of the things that we may have did, didn't do well. You're not going to feel great every day. You're right, but we can choose to be great every day. Now, when those situations come up, I don't know if I can do this. This is hard, right? That's why we do hard things in here, right? To encourage you to do hard things out there. What are the values for impact? Um, encourage, encouragement, effort, excellence. <laughs> Hey, hey, how's it going? How you doing? Welcome to the Dreaming to Compete podcast, where we own our dreams by competing and compete by owning our dreams. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be back. It's great. We, you were one of our first guests. We did a small interview about mobility, if you can remember. Yes, sir. And it was great. So I just want to have a deeper conversation about your pathway to success. Okay. Yes, sir. It's great. I love having all type of conversations with you, your questions and your thinking. I, I just love it. Thank you. Thank you. And chess. And chess. I'm, I'm beating you in chess. Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> so as a star, like, what is your definition of success? Being able to make your dreams come true. And what is a dream? Man. <clears throat> Something that you're able to think about where you feel like you can change the world. What is your dream right now? To encourage the world. Encourage the world? How do you think that's going to change the world? Well, I think that right now, you know, we can use a lot more encouragement. You know, I think like, you know, the, when I'm when I'm looking out, you know, I just think that we would be better as a as a whole with more encouragement, you know, and I think with that encouragement that can help fuel people to follow the things that they want to achieve in life because they'll have more courage to do so. And with more people, you know, living out their, their purpose, their passions, I just feel like, you know, they'll be much more enjoyable. Great. And how would you be able to say that you accomplished that? Is there a metric that you can use? No, I think it's, it's, there's no, like, no, like, end product. I think it's something that's, like, continuing to grow, like, no matter what platform you're on, right? It's continuing to to live your purpose in mind would be to encourage the world. So anytime I'm having a, a conversation, one-on-one -on -one conversation, um, leading a class, uh, talking to a group of people, I understand what my purpose is, and I feel like there's never – and into that. So is that a purpose or a dream or both? Both. So do you think is a dream and a purpose the same thing? I think it can be, right? I think, I definitely think it can be. And I think that, you know, you can use your purpose to fuel your dream. So I feel like they can coincide. So if my purpose is to encourage the world, right, well, my dream is aligned with that. Now I just set goals, right? And throughout those goals, I feel like the purpose is, is fueling each goal, which is making the dream come to fruition. Oh, how are you making that happen? What are you doing right now? Who are you right now? It's just for everyone that does not know you really well. Um, I'm Justin Taylor. Uh, uh, I go by JT. Um, uh, I'm a trainer at Impact Performance. And that's how we met. Yeah, yeah. We, so we, well, we met, I coach you at soccer. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's who JT is. He's a great mentor of mine. He's been a coach for like four, five years now. When I went to high school, played mm -hmm. soccer. And since then, you've just been a great mentor of mine you've been there always for me uh, you've helped me grow so much that i'm so grateful for everything thank you i'm, I'm grateful for our relationship because i've learned a lot from you as well thank you and that's how you are living your purpose how that's how you're living your dream of you've encouraged me in the same way you are encouraged on other people yeah
Yeah. So how do you do that with Impact? Um, Which is Impact is the gym that you founded? Yes. Yes. Uh, we founded Impact in 2020. Um, I've been coaching and training since 2013. Um and I think that how, you know, I feel like Impact is just another platform to where I'm able to engage people. So when we're in training, you know, or when we're in session, you know, I want to encourage people to do it correctly because I feel like they'll get the best benefit by doing it correctly. I also want to, you know, encourage people to enjoy the pain, right? Enjoy the process, enjoy, right, what you're going through because it's leading you closer to you know hopefully it's leading you closer to your goal in life um you know we encourage people to you know apply you know hopefully apply the things that they're learning in the gym not just you know how to live properly but how to you know enjoy it and apply it to their everyday life so just more the mindset yes absolutely absolutely do you think is the mindset the most important thing in life and in any sports and because I'm, I'm thinking about athletes mm -hmm. in which people say that the 90% of the game is mental and te only 10% is physical. What do you think about that? I think the game, yes, 90-10. I think the approach, I think the game is just one facet, right? We got practice, right? Where I feel like that's a lot of physical, right? Getting your body physical capable. And then when it comes to the game, you're approaching it more mentally because your body has already been prepared physically. I feel like me personally, they go hand in hand. I feel like, you know, with the strong mindset, right, is fueled by a strong physical presence, right? Because if you're not as strong physically, then your mindset can only go so far because it's what's going to back it up, right? What's going to fuel it mm -hmm. right and then if you're only you know focus on the the physical aspect of it then you're you're moving without a purpose right and that can lead to injury that can lead to like just going nowhere so i feel like they're hand in hand and same thing like if your mindset is not there how are you going to prepare how are you going to practice correct how are you going to wake up those days that you're tired and don't want to do anything just want to recover and like lay down or like a day that like you don't want to practice but you do you do know how that you have to practice absolutely so we feel like tired is a mindset at impact performance we all we say the only tire we know on vehicle that's it why well because tired is a mindset right tired is a feeling and 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 we don't operate based off our feelings right we that's why Right. It's important that mindset is important and to have your purpose and your goal at the forefront of your mindset. So when all these other feelings like you're talking about earlier about like, you know, waking up when you don't want to or, or when you feel like you don't want to, when you feel like you don't want to do this, this another set. Right. You know, that those are feelings and we don't we can't operate our lives based off those feelings. And when we're operating our lives based on feelings, how do we change that? Can you repeat that? If we are operating, operate, operating life based on feelings, how do we change that? I think that we have to recognize the truth, right? And the truth is our words are powerful, right? Um, you may be feeling a, a, a certain way, but there, there are things or mantras, there are all types of things to where you can, you know, tell yourself these truths to where your mind will start to transform. And instead of thinking and operating based off your feelings, the more you train your mind, a.k.a. mindset, right, the more that your your mind will, will it may feel a certain type of way, but it will recognize the truth, right? I may think that I feel like I don't want to wake up, however... I, I want to be successful. So I, in essence, I really do want to wake up. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, how do you train the mindset? How do you train the mindset? How do I personally? Um, man, um, 
a lot of listening to like a lot of summaries on on these try these mindset books. Um, the heroic app. It's nice. Yes, yes. Has been has been key for me. Um, listening to like a lot of people who I feel like are are have reached the success on the outside looking in, have reached the success that I feel like I'm aiming for listening to them speak about their situations and stuff like that. What have you learned about learning from others about their success? Be a lifelong learner. Um, that's one of the main things, be teachable, right? Um, beginner's mindset. Always have a beginner's mindset. Oh, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, you know, just being teachable, I feel like is the main thing for me as that's been working for me. Because I believe we can learn something new every day. It, even if you think, if I think I'm doing like in this conversation, we're not talking anything that, that I already know everything that we're doing in this, talking about this, in this conversation or during our workout, if I approach it with a beginner's mindset, I may learn something new mm -hmm. or I may learn something that I don't want to do, like that wouldn't be good for me or something that I can implement to make it better. Absolutely. So things to avoid and things to add. Absolutely, always. It's messy. So I always have it at beginner's mindset. That's lovely. Now that we talk about success, do you think you are successful? Absolutely. Why? Um, I feel like I'm living in my purpose. And I wake up and I get to enjoy it every day. So how... What can we learn from your pathway to success? We would like to go through that pathway to your success that you have right now to have us learn and implement skills that we can apply in our lives. How was that pathway to your success? For the Everton start. I think it started with my words. You know, they say, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So for me, I feel like the start was speaking truth, not only to myself, but to others. And, you know, and then after that process, then it was not letting negative sentences finish in my brain. And after that process, it uh, was, when did you start implementing that? When? Man, I, those like not letting negative sentences get in your head. Probably four years ago, 2020, 2021. Was hard. Maybe 2019. I'm going to say between 2015 to 2024. You're still learning. Absolutely. Every day. There's no time when you're going to be like, that's it. No, man. I'm not having negative Talk to my head. No, because, you know, and I think that, you know, it just, you know, I feel like the more, the more I've been able to learn, like the, the larger the obstacles come, right? It doesn't just look like negativity in the brain anymore. It may be, you know, feelings of frustration that are trying to paint a picture. And it's not like, uh, an evident picture is more of like small little boom, boom, boom. And then when I'm, I'm like, man, what's going on? What's wrong with my mental? Then it's like, well, maybe my physical's off. So it's like, you know, it's these, it's these small battles every day and then just learning from them. Does Think, that make sense? Yeah, having the virtue of curiosity to see what's working and what, what's not. Yes, yeah. Say that again, I'm sorry. So having the virtue of curiosity to see what's working and what's not working, what can you change? How can we improve? Or am I lacking some virtues, some skills yeah. that I can work on to better off my mindset, better off my physical health, better off my loving relationships, my work? Yeah. That's what I all wanted to say. <laughs> right. Very, very beautifully put. And why did you start 
on that pathway, like of like thinking about changing your negative thoughts. Like, was there anything in your life that switched you and changed you that made you realize, oh, I need to change my mindset or my self-talk or just learning, you learn from someone, a book or something like that? Or just like... Mm -hmm. I think mostly life. What was the question? Like, what made you start changing your self-talk? Okay, all right. Okay. Um, well, I've always had like a dream of where I wanted to be in life, right? And you know, and I've I've seen like I feel like I have a vision of the end goal, mm -hmm. and I feel like as I'm going through life, I didn't understand on how to get there, and so that's when. You know, I started checking out some available resources, right? And started listening to people who, like I've said, who, who reach this level of success on the outside that I'm looking at. I don't know what, what you know. If they're everything. successful. Yeah, yeah, if they would consider, you know. But on the outside looking in, right, having that type of platform to reach. What type of people, people do you consider as successful from the outside looking in? Oh, man. You said which people? Yeah. Some examples. Of those here. One, one, one would be one of my favorite artists right on the outside looking in, Jay-Z. Jay-Z. I feel like he can use his platform to teach and to educate. Um, you know... I feel like, you know, some of his lyrics are are, are very inspirational. Uh -huh. um, another person would be uh, our teacher and pastor, Andy Stanley. Uh -huh. um, I feel like, you know, you know, these are teachers, right? They're 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 trying to teach you, you know, the things that they learn. Um, I enjoy listening to T.D. Jakes. Uh, who else? And what have you learned from those people? That I can do it. That I can achieve the dreams that I can envision. What have you envisioned? What are some of those visions? Um, some of them are being able to help and encourage over one million people. And then create financial freedom for my family and generations to come. How do you see that one million people? Like, how do you see yourself helping and encouraging that one million people? Through what? Through different platforms. Um, through our fitness platform. Um, my wife and I, we have a wellness company, you know, uh, creating creating different platforms for people to uh and then creating the resources to give to provide on these platforms that will be able to help people um like for in the gym right for impact performance we have an online platform to where we're able to encourage people that may live in texas right we're well that's currently what we're able to do you know people that may live across the globe, you know, um, you know, also our social media, you know, we want to use our social media to encourage people. Um, um, with our wellness program, we want to create um, different packets. We want to create different eBooks. We want to create different um, just resources that we're able to provide to different companies to where, you know, we can, we can try to, you know, instill mental, what we call mental wellness. So, so that's the first step, having a vision. How would you encourage, encourage us and guide us to do that? Like, what is, what would you advise us to make that vision come true? Like, if we have a vision, mm -hmm. there's a first step. Now, how can we make it true? I feel like the first step would be to write it down. All right. I feel like once you have it written down now, like you can visually see it written down and then um, 
what I do with with mine is I have an alarm on my phone. So every day the alarm will go off at the same time to where I'm able to see it, right, and read it. My, so what is the alarm? Like, like on my phone. But it says like your vision, it says mm -hmm. your angle. It says my dream, right? It says my vision and my mission, right? It is to encourage over one million people and to create financial freedom for my friends. And that's just a reminder, something mm -hmm. that, I don't know, you have it at 6 a.m., whatever time you have it, it comes up. Read it. You, you read it, and it's it. Mm -hmm. and, all right. Because, um, you know, just based off, you know, some of the things that I've researched and that, you know, I've heard, you know, people say is, like, look at your vision every day, right? Look at your dreams every day. You know, have it written. First they say, like, write it down. Then they say, try to look at it every day. And I think, you know, that'll, I think, Some people may call it like the law of attraction. Some people may call it faith. You know, I think all of it is, you know, what we, th or they call it scientific is the uh, reticulating activating system, the RAS, right? And it's, it's like whatever you, you think about most, you're going to become. And so if you constantly think about your vision and your dreams and, you know, your mission And you take that and you apply that to every aspect of your life, then I feel like it's only inevitable that it happens. And that's why my brand, like I named it Dream to Compete, because everything starts with a dream. Everything starts with a vision. And then it's how we compete to make that vision come true. And not how we compete with other, against others. We can compete with others to become better. And with ourselves, with the versions of ourselves from yesterday. How are we better from yesterday? How are we making progress to make that dream come true? Absolutely. And competition is good. Why? Um, I feel like competition is can be used to make each other better, right? To where, you know, think about why while games are important, right? Because you're preparing for this moment, right? You're You're trying to become better in this moment. Now, becoming better isn't only just for that particular sport. Becoming better is so that way you can, the things that you're learning to become better, you can apply to every aspect of your life. And then you come to the game, right? And you're able to perform, but you're just applying the things against competition that you're not going against every day, right? And against unknown obstacles, against you know, somebody who's trying to prevent you from accomplishing your goal. So how are you going to overcome those obstacles, right? And by overcoming those obstacles during that game, right, I feel like that's the opportunity to truly become better. I love it. And in those moments of competition, how do we prevent ourselves from comparison? Because comparison is going to take us away from a healthy competition. Like if I see myself, oh, I want to do this because I want to be better than him. and Or he has this, this person has this, I want to have this, that, or even better. Like, how, how do you take comparison like that? Well, I mean, I think that if you're focused on your purpose, right, you're focused on, like, your vision, you're focused on, you know, your mission, then it's kind of hard for comparison to come into play because, right, if my, if my purpose is to encourage, right, that's even my competition. If they make a great play, great play, right? If they do something well, right, encourage, right? If I do something well, right, then, or if I'm, if I'm able to, to, to use, like, you know, something that I'm able to, that I've learned, right, that's encouraging, that feels good. Right. And it's it's more I think that's where the mental aspect comes into play. Like, what are you focused on? Now, if you're focused on the outcome of the game, then I feel like you're missing the purpose. Right. Of course, we want to win. I we want to win. We are competitors. Yeah, we're we're competitors. And that's we want to win. But I feel like even if you lose the game, there's some things that you're able to learn. So that's a win. Right. And then you just come back next time, you know, practice. Now I learned that, okay, I want to work on this. Right. So now I go back to the practice 
And now I get to enjoy working on this. So then when I come back to competition, I just add another tool and I just overcame another obstacle. And so it's like... So to be able to compete, you say that we have to have a purpose first. We have to have a dream first. Mm -hmm. the, not, no, not, not to be able to. I think anybody can compete, right? I think that it, like, you asked about the comparison. To avoid comparison. I feel like. Mm -hmm. The first step is having a purpose. So to have something to focus on that is not a comparison, but to focus on our purpose. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Absolutely. I get it. Yeah, because that's the only thing you can control. Like, as much as we want to try to control the outcome, we can't. Right? We can't. We can't control the score. Why? Because we have free will, we were created, we have free will to only control our own actions. I can't control the ball going into the basket. Yeah. I can control how I release the ball to create the best probability for it to go in the basket. However, I can't control the defender jumping up and altering the shot. But what I can do is try to control situations to where I create enough space to, I'm, I'm referring to basketball because yeah. I feel like I'm a hooper now, you know? That's so cool. what I can do is try to create enough space to where he doesn't, it, it limits his opportunity to block the shot and then release it to the best of my ability. So these are the things that I feel like God has given us control free will. So... By focusing on the things that we're able to control, then what was the question? How come we can't control the outcome? Yeah. Because. Why yeah, not? Yeah. Because of free will. Because you cannot control the other person. You can't control. No, the only thing you can control is yourself. So can we control the results of our dreams? No. The outcome. It depends on what your dreams are. Let's take it to your dream, to your purpose. Do I feel like I can control it and you control it? I believe that I will be able to control the steps that we put in place to reach this goal. So I feel like we'll be able to reach this goal. I can control my actions to where to... to To do the plan, right? To execute the plan, right? Of action to where it can lead us to reaching this goal. But can you control the outcome of reaching out a million people, like encouraging a million people? No. How do you deal with that? By focusing on things we can control, right? We can control the plan, right? We can control the execution on my part of the plan, right? So if I know that I have in the plan, my task are A, B, and C, I can do A, B, and C to the best of my ability to where hopefully, right, that reaches a certain number of people. Now, if we're at our expectations are for it to reach 10,000, right, and we only reach 5,000, that's okay. You know why? Because we're still trying, mm -hmm. right? And we're reaching people. And so now, what do we do well on reaching 5,000? Oh, well, we did this well. We did this well. So let's continue to work towards that. So those are wins in my book. So, and so you know, if, if we try something, right, we set expectations to try something and we don't hit the number, I think it's important to focus on the things that we did do well and just build off that. And understanding of the things that we may have did, didn't do well, right? Maybe, I, you know, if I spent a little bit more time on executing A, right, what would that have, could that have changed the outcome? Possibly, right? So now next time, listen, we're going to focus harder on A and doing this, spend more time in A and see where that gets us. Oh, that might only got us 2,000. Maybe A is not even that important. 
let's focus on B and C, and that might reach us 10,000. And so it's just, it's like. So will you be okay by not reaching 1 million? Absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like I will. You can. I, you will. I feel like I can and I will. But you'll be okay because you still try and you did everything possible. Absolutely. So we will be okay only if we know that we gave it all. Absolutely. Or will you be okay even if you didn't give it all? I think we will be okay if when we do give it all. I feel like we won't be okay if we don't give our all. Mm -hmm. You know, because by not giving your best is sort of like like not respecting yourself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, it's like you have, we were created with all this ability and we were created to be like world changers, right? We were, we were, we were, we were created to be magnificent, right? And to not live in that, right? I don't see how you can bring joy to your life. By not living in that, I don't see how, like, like, you can truly enjoy life. And that, I ask you that because that's one question that you always ask me. Like, when I was transitioning from soccer to motocross, and now that I'm transitioning from motocross to coaching, you've told me, are you okay? Like, with, with that change, did you give it all? Mm -hmm. That... That gives me peace of mind that saying, yes, I did. Absolutely. So I think that's a pretty important question that we should ask ourselves. Um, and not even after big changes like mine, but every day at night when we go to sleep, like, did I give it all? Did I give it all during the whole day? Yes, no. What can I do? What can I do better? Uh, what did I do good? And keep doing that. Absolutely. And then also understanding that, you know, you're not going to feel great every day. You're right. But we can choose to be great every day. And even if, oh, oh choose to be great. Yes. And even if, right, one day, right, you're, say you're, if, 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 if your life, right, is, is this bop, right, and we fill it to the top, right, that's how much we have to give, right? Tomorrow, our model may be halfway filled, but are we going to give it everything we got from that half-filled bottle? And I think that is choosing excellence. I think that is choosing to be great, right? Because some days our, our cup may be all the way full, right? And, and let's use that. Uh, how do we make sure that most days we have the, the cup all the way full? Honestly, I feel like nutrition. I feel like, you know, prayer. I feel like exercise. I feel like serving. I feel like sleep. You know, and loving. So mind, body, and spirit. Absolutely. Being synchronized with mind, body, and spirit. Absolutely. And then you work on different things on mind, on the body, and the spirit. So yeah. how does exercise, sleep, and nutrition, the basics of that, help you in your body? On your spirit, pray, being with your family, love, and then, and then the mind, self-talk, all of those things. Yes. What is one thing for each one of those that you do every day? Like the most important thing that you know that you have to do. You be fundamental, you basic. Try. Try? That's, and that's for all of them. That's for all of them. Just try. I heard something from a podcast about... It was a psychologist in which he said that the thing that the number one advice that he would give to people is to 
be intentional. And I think mm. it really, it really aligns with trying because if you are intentional in everything that you're doing, moment to moment, you are trying. You are trying to be your best. If I'm intentional right now of having a great conversation with you and encouraging the world, encouraging someone specific, I'm being intentional. I'm trying. Absolutely. So I would say being intentional. Being intentional. I like that. Intention. So can you ask me the question again? What is one thing? What is one thing that you focus on body, mind, and spirit every day? Being intentional. Nice. Yes. yes, sir. I like it. Yeah. Intentional. So how are you intentional on uh, using <sighs> body? How am I intentional with my body? Yeah. Um, because I feel like the body, if your energy is low, that's the most fundamental thing. If you don't have energy, then how are you going to show up at your best at work? How are you going to show up at your best with your loved ones? How are you going to show up at your best with your dreams? I don't think you can if your body's not in sync. You know, and I think that, you know, one thing that, you know, we, I try is just be aware of the foods that I'm putting in my body, um, making sure that the foods are what I would consider nutritionally beneficial, right? Putting the, the foods in my body that I feel like are going to support the energy that I need. Um, also, so what are three rules that you would give us on nutrition? Oh, three rules on nutrition. So we can be intentional with the nutrition, with the food that we put into our body. Number one, I would say know why you're eating what you're eating. Know why. Know why, right? So if I'm looking for a source of protein, right, I know why I'm going to eat, let's just say this chicken breast. If I'm looking for a source of vegetables, right, I know why my body is going to want this green beans or broccoli. Mm -hmm. um, number two, I would say preparation. So number one is know why. Number two, I would say preparation. Like having it prepared makes the process a lot more simpler. You know, it's, I feel like it could be more work on the front end. However, your future self will thank you later. Uh -huh. So how do you do preparation for yourself? Um, well, we use, we use a meal prep company. Also, we'll talk about what we're going to make throughout the week. At the beginning of the week, my wife and I. And so once we have what we're going to make, then we go to the grocery store and we intentionally buy the foods that we're planning on making. And then we know our schedule for the week, right? On days to where, like, if our kids have games, right? So I know that I need to prepare dinner earlier, right? So that way that they'll be prepared because trying to prepare it after the game, right? You got to get them showered up. You know, just the complexities of life will start to fall into play. So that preparation of knowing your schedule, right? And being able to having the food available and to prepare early so that way when it's time to eat, you know what you're going to eat, all right? You know why you're going to eat it, you know when you're going to eat. If that preparation is hard for us and we don't eat well, that we eat sugar or we eat things that we know that are not best for our bodies, how can we change it? So you're saying... Your question is, we are knowingly eating things that we know aren't good for us. Is it something to where, like, I mean, is it like, like every I'm, once in a while? Like, I, I, what, is my, what is the situation? It's just a habit that, I mean, it's something that I know is not good for me. I know it's not giving me the best energy possible to run my day, to be, to have my cup full of energy and it's just because I like it in flavor it's just a habit that I built that is hard to break okay so are there healthy alternatives 
that's what I would ask this person, right? So if you enjoy cake, right? Are there any healthy alternatives to cake? Mm. Right? And if there are healthy alternatives, maybe that's healthier ingredients. Maybe that's baking the cake yourself, right? Using healthier ingredients. Maybe that's, you know, just just try and be intentional, right? This is something that a person really wants to change. I just, you know, grace, high standards, high grace. Give yourself these standards, right? You know, and set these standards for yourself and also show yourself grace if you slip up, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, of course. Right? Like aim high. But when you... If you... If you... Or when you miss it because it's going to happen. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like, I don't, me personally, I don't think anything is definitive, like definite. So I don't know if, if it is going to happen. It may happen, but some people may, you know, you know what? And I do it. I'm going to do it. And that's it. Right. And so. If it happens, have grace. Yeah. If it happens, have grace. Try to figure out why it happened. Was it the lack of preparation? Oh, man. Um, Because it's right here, right? So now instead I I can cook this meal, which is going to take 30 minutes to an hour, or if it's just available right here, right? I'm probably going to choose what's available. So boom, okay, well, how can we make this healthier option accessible like this unhealthier option? Yeah. Okay, so know what you're eating. Yes. And prep. Third, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. That would be number three. Enjoy it, right? Enjoy learning. I I feel like enjoy learning why you're eating what you're eating. Mm -hmm. Then I feel like you'll become more invested. Enjoy preparing. Yes. Find ways to enjoy the preparation. So preparing with your wife, preparing with your family. So it's just not that hard. It's just not something that, oh, I want, I have to prep. I have to prep. No, oh. something that you enjoy. It's like family time. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we're about to, we're about to cook these meals together. Right. And let's put on some music, like, you know, and have some great conversation, like, you know, talk about our dreams, you know, it's, it's, you know, make it enjoyable. Okay. So that's nutrition. What other aspect do you think is important to have our cup full of energy? Um, definitely like the physical, physical aspect of like strength training and conditioning. We feel like strength and conditioning training is key. Um, the strength part helps build that resilience, right? And not only are you getting stronger physically, but scientifically, you're getting stronger mentally. Mm-hmm. So to overcome, like, the same things that you may overcome in the gym, you can apply to different areas and aspects of your life. The condition I mean, portion, right, it gives you the stamina to, 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 to feed that resilience, mm-hmm. right, to accomplishing certain things. Okay. How do we train that? Conditioning and strength. Um, I mean, I think you can do it different ways. Um, at Impact Performance, we do it through strength training. Um, you know, our strength and conditioning classes will. We have four main lifts that we focus on. That is the overhead press, bench press, squat, deadlift. All right. Um, followed by we switch up our programs. We have a six week program followed by a four week program falling back to the six-week program and how we structure our workouts. Wow. Um, That's great. And I've been doing it. Yes. It's great. Yeah. So if anyone wants to come out, Impact Performance, come check it out, try it out. Yes. Absolutely. So um, nutrition, physical. physical. Look. I think as far as like body and recovery. And recovery. Recovery. Absolutely. Absolutely. How can we recover? 
Um, I like to recover by mobility and focus on flexibility. Yeah. Giving your muscles room to grow. Um, relaxing your body, you know, that'll help prevent injuries, right? That will help the results produce faster, you know, by the recovery. And so, there's ways, different ways. Absolutely. That's the, the way you like to recover. But there's different ways. Even exercise is a way to recover. Mm -hmm. After a long day at the office, doing exercise will help you recover your mind. Ooh. The nutrition that we just talked about, all of those are ways that we can recover. Meditating, sauna, which we have right here. Yeah, fire and ice. Mm, all those are ways that we can recover to fill up our cup and be at our best energy-wise to show up at our best work and love-wise. Absolutely. Oh. When you have those moments when you want to quit or like that, it's like life is hard. I don't know why I'm actually pursuing this purpose, this dream. What would you advise us? Like quit on those dreams because all oh, is too hard. Let me just go for something easier. I think it circles back into our passion, our our purpose, our mission. Because even if life gets hard, right, we should still be able to, for instance, right, if mine is to encourage the world, when life is is hard, I can still encourage somebody outside, mm -hmm. right? I'm still able to do that, right? And that will take, the the selfishness away in a way yeah. right because it's not all about me mm. right it's not all about how i feel right and so when times like that happen i think it's important to remember why we're doing it and when we're when we're doing it for you know for others right then i feel like then that will reignite the 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 fire yeah. right and the flame and the passion and get it burned and if we don't have that why clear how would you advise us to to get that why clear mm. to find that why how did you find your why when did you find it oh how how I would say When I define what I truly wanted in life. When was that? Was it? I'm going to say between 2013 to 2024. Well, then, because I think that it's like uh, always developing, mm -hmm. right? And the, the definition, the mission became clear, I would say, 2021, 2022, right? The mission became clear, clear day. Um, but then it has some tweaks. After 2021, yeah. after it was clear, it has some tweaks. And yeah. it's changing every day, every week, every month, every year. Absolutely. Because that one million, yeah, it's never set in stone. Because that one million, one day I feel like will turn into one billion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, I don't think that it's set in stone. I think that it's just been like a self-discovery. I feel like it's always been in there. Like, I feel like we were we were designed with it with, within us, right? But becoming the person who you want to become, right? And, 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 and living in your intentionally living in your purpose towards your mission it it just it just makes it clear 
So did I answer your question? So do you think we come to the world with a purpose already? Yes, inside of us. There is already, already been instilled inside us. So then, how do we find it? I have to think through experiences and intentional searching. Want the want to become a better, like a, a better person, right? Like through certain principles, like integrity. Like for my setting of values, setting of values. You have different values for impact and you have different values for your family. Mm -hmm. That's right. Correct. What are the values for impact? Um, encourage, encouragement, effort, excellence. Why those? I feel like encouraging people to do things that maybe they felt like they couldn't do is can be applied to their everyday life. Now, when those situations come up, I don't know if I can do this. This is hard, right? That's why we do hard things in here, right? To encourage you to do hard things out there. Um, effort, we feel like, you know, that is the try. That is the intentionality, right? Is to put effort towards everything that you do. And that's the things that you may think. And I say you may think you don't want to do because initially you may not think that you want to do this, but when you, on the grand scheme of things, if you know that it's going to lead you to your goal, then of course you want to do it because you want to reach your goal. Yeah. So it's just a price that you have to pay. Uh -huh. It's just a price that you have to pay. Yes. Yes. You know, and, and so to encourage that effort, right, is Then again, it's things that they can take in here, apply it out there, and then excellence, man. Just do everything with excellence, right? What is excellence? Doing things to the best of your ability, not right? The best of your ability, not the best of her ability. To the best of my ability. Your ability, absolute. And I feel like that's what excellence is. And doing it to like, like, like focusing on the form with excellence. Because through that excellence is where you're truly going to reap, you know, the reward. You're going to get the success that you're looking for, right? And so, yes. So how do we find, when we find a why, when we find our purpose by searching, setting up values and all of that, how do we know that it is the right purpose and I am not pursuing the wrong purpose of my life that I came to the world with? Well, the beautiful thing is we get to choose. It is a choice, right? We get to choose. And how do we know is because it's something that we can do regardless of where we're at in life. We can do it regardless of any situation, any circumstance, right? It's something that... that If you have zero dollars in your pocket or infinite access to infinite resources, you still be able to do it. It doesn't matter if you're sad or happy. It doesn't matter if you're injured, uninjured, on top. It doesn't matter because you'll still be able to do it. So my purpose should not be becoming a professional motocross rider, but becoming a professional soccer player. That is just a, a goal. Yes, I feel like those are platforms for you to, you know, being able to communicate your purpose, right? These are platforms. Mm -hmm. So what's next in your life right now? What's next in my life? Yeah. Oh. You've been, you've reached out this success until now. Now, I know that you want to reach one million. That's your next goal. Mm -hmm. Vision. What is currently? Why not? What's next? I thought it. I don't know. Let's see where it's like. Yeah. Takes us. Yeah, I think, you know, once we hit a million, 
right? I think that then it's back to the drawing boards. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to bring it home, what is your definition of compete? What does it mean to compete? To make each other better. To make each other better. Yeah. Like, uh, I know you're not supposed to use the word within the definition, but a competition to make each other better. That's what I feel like. Compete. Okay, so do you feel we need more people to be able to compete? By... Or help each other better I would just like, be like I yeah. feel like we could you know we 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 can make the world better if people competed to make each other better okay yeah. I love that thank you thank you coach thank you so much it's great having you in the podcast and hopefully I'll, I'll have you in the podcast again in the future this is the second time Thank you for taking the time to be here. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, man. This is, this is amazing. All right. And this is, y'all call try Impact Performance. Thank you.